you're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We're not going to go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Good. You're still listening to reason. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Focus on the task at hand. And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something? You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. Oh? No talking then? Fine. What even makes you think you can kill me? I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. You lunge forward without a moment's hesitation. You feel flesh easily give way and look down to see your blade already sinking deep into her heart. Oh, this is it, isn't it? I'm almost embarrassed. I should have seen that coming. But I have to wonder, do you actually believe this was enough to kill me? It's like she's convinced she can't die. Yes, even as she lays there dying, she entirely believes herself to be alive and well. But it's over isn't it? She stopped breathing moments ago, that arrogant look still plastered on her face. But is it over? Really over? It's over. You could check her sleeves if you want, but I can assure you that there's nothing hidden up there. We should make sure. What's the harm in checking for a pulse? I really don't think you should do that. And why shouldn't we? 
Is there something you're not telling us? I've told you everything that's happened with complete accuracy. The princess is dead. Your blade pierced her heart. There's no coming back from that. You lean down and wrap your hand around the blade's hilt. But as you begin to slide it out of its resting place, you feel a sharp and sudden jab in your side. What was that? I guess I won't be dying alone after all. Quick, let's get out of here. It's too late for that now. You collapse to the ground as the mortally wounded princess twists a blade of her own deeper between your ribs. As you fall, she falls with you, exhausted by the effort, the little life that was left in her eyes fading rapidly. An eye for an eye, a life for a life. I guess we're even now. See you around. You were so close. Why did you hesitate? <sighs> it doesn't matter. At least you managed to take her with you. For whatever that's worth. Everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Again? People don't die twice. You haven't even met the princess, and I hardly think she'd be capable of killing someone as skilled and courageous as yourself. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. This whole thing's a crock of shit. She's just going to pull a knife out of nowhere and stab us again. Stabbed to death? Well, you won't have to worry about that. The princess is unarmed. Yeah, that's exactly what you told us last time. You said this whole thing would be easy, but after we sank our blade into her heart, she just got up and started stabbing us. Calm down. I assure you she has no weapons, so there's no reason to fear her. You were made for this job. You'll do just fine. Those are two very different questions, but fine. I'll indulge you if that's what it takes to get you moving. Let's say for a moment that this really is the second time you've met me, or, or at least a version of me. You died last time, which probably only happened because you didn't listen to me. We mostly listened to you. How were we supposed to know she'd spring back to life? If she sprung back to life in this hypothetical scenario, then clearly you didn't slay her. But congratulations, been given a chance to actually do this right. And I believe your other question was something along the lines of, oh, what's the point of doing anything? If you're asking that, it sounds to me like you're making the rather dangerous assumption that your actions last time around didn't have any consequences. What do you mean? Of course there weren't any consequences. We stabbed the princess, the princess stabbed us, and now everyone's right back to where they started. That sounds pretty consequence-free to me. Yes, but in this purely hypothetical scenario, that begs the question of how you got back here. Did time simply rewind itself, or were you instead transported to a different world entirely? Had you failed to slay the princess, what would have happened to everyone in the place you left? Screw this. Who cares what happened to everyone else? She's not going to play fair, so we should do what we can to save ourselves and just get out of here. At least you know not to trust her, but you do realise that everything and everyone includes you, right? If you turn around and leave, you're dooming yourself as well as everyone else. We were so close to finishing the job last time. 
She can't get the jump on us twice. If we're careful, we should be fine. That's the spirit. Just keep that stiff upper lip, and you'll save the world in no time at all. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. It couldn't be more on the money. But we're really doing this, aren't we? I say you're lost, but I'm stuck here with you. We know what to look out for this time. We know to be careful. Just stay focused and you'll be fine. The interior of the cabin is a jagged mess of warped wood and broken boards, their splintered edges as uninviting as shattered glass. The only furniture of note is a pointed table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Very different. Maybe that's because you haven't actually been here. I hope this means you'll finally drop that ridiculous past life nonsense. You haven't died, and you certainly haven't been killed by the princess. So focus up. A lot's riding on this. That's because there isn't a mirror. There's a table, the blade sitting on the table, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. Can you two stop arguing? It's stressful enough in here without all of this extra noise. As do I. I'm not lying to you. Use your eyes. There is no mirror. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would a mirror even do? Let you waste time preening yourself instead of doing what needs to be done. Walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. But it was there a second ago. Now it's gone. Yet another thing in here playing tricks on us. I hate this place. You take the blade from the table. It will be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. It feels a bit better to have a weapon in our hands. Let's make her hurt for what she's done to us. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing what must once have been stairs. The fractured slats look as if they've been torn from their source and violently jammed into the wall. The air seeping up from below has an almost metallic quality to it, like the smell of fresh blood. And you can hear what sounds like the rhythmic scraping of metal coming from down below. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favour. That's right, scraping. I told you she has something, I told you. That sound could be anything. It's probably just her chains dragging across the floor. I am begging you to get out of your head. Her grating voice carries up the stairs. I hope you've come to rescue me. I've been stuck down here forever. There is something so wrong with that voice. Yeah. She thinks she's better than us, like she doesn't even have to put on an act this time. As you descend the final step, the form of the princess comes into view, her sharp eyes following you from across the room. I wonder if she remembers us. Finally, somebody! Quick, get me out of these chains! We're not safe here! Come on now, we're not falling for that, are we? She's trying to trick us, but she can't hide that threatening edge to her voice. 
She just wants us to get close, to let our guard down. If she sounds threatening, it's because her mask is already slipping. She knows why you're here. You are armed, after all. What are you waiting for? You are here to rescue me, right? sorts of things, which is why I think that's a great idea. I would love to not be chained up down here. Being chained up is so boring, and I crave fresh and new activities to broaden my horizons. Please don't let her out of here. Believe it or not, I think I'm actually with him on this. Okay, but what if all of this is just a misunderstanding? There has to be room for this to be a misunderstanding. Yes! I mean, maybe. I've never done any of those things, but there is something alluring about the sound of it. I think it would also be fun to do other activities like look at a bird or touch a tree. Okay, now listen. You're not actually buying this, are you? Listen. Yes, I would like to look at a bird. You can look at a bird later. But if we look at a bird now, we wouldn't have to be here. He has a point. Just make a decision already. A knife? What are you talking about? I don't have a knife. Where would I keep a knife? And why would I stab you to death? I don't know you. You haven't given me a reason to stab you to death. It would be so silly of me to cut you open and look at your insides. Okay, I could have sworn we didn't mention stabbing anyone to death. Sounds like she's really out for blood. Fortunately for you, she isn't armed. Don't. Okay, I see. I have an idea. You should come over here and stare directly at the chains. You won't be able to find a key if you don't know what it's supposed to look like, so you better come right within close staring distance just to be sure. I have absolutely zero doubts that she is going to stab us if we get close to her. She certainly feels threatening. Just because she's acting like she's going to stab you doesn't mean she has the means to actually do it. But you know who is armed? You! So stop second-guessing yourself and do your job. But I'm nervous. All the more reason to jump into the deep end and deal with her right now before you waste any more time getting stuck in your head. The princess falls silent, her smile unwavering as you charge across the room. Okay, she hasn't pulled out a knife yet, and her hands are still behind her back. I think we can do this, I think we can win. We just have to strike now, but make sure you keep your eyes on those hands. I don't trust her for a second. But your focus is broken by the horrible sound of metal slicing through meat. Who's meat? Not ours, right? Hers, at first. Then yours. Hehe. <laughs> Ow! What, what did she even hit us with? You stare down at your chest, and at the long, thin blade she impaled you with. And then the red, angry slit along the flesh of her thigh, where the blade had been nestled just a moment ago. It's still lodged in her leg, emerging from her knee, hinging up and out of her body like some extra metallic limb. Bullshit. 
absolute bullshit. You're going to die now. With a twist of her knee and a painful squelch, she does just that. Everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the woods. No, fuck that. If we're gonna have to keep doing this over and over and over again, we're not starting in that goddamn woods every time. We're starting in the fucking cabin. Your what? The interior of the cabin is sharp, a constricting mess of curved and battered sheet metal pushing you towards... Wait, excuse me? What just happened? What did you just do? I feel dizzy. Oh ho ho ho! I guess I took us to the cabin, didn't I? Isn't that interesting? Who holds the cards now? The circle's getting smaller and smaller. Running isn't an option anymore. We have to fight. Good. It's better that way. Without a fight, no one can win. And if no one can win, then nothing has any meaning. Great. So obviously you've already been here. How many times? This is our third? No wonder things have fallen apart. You do realize that every time you fail, she escapes and an entire world is damned to destruction, right? That can't be right. That's too much responsibility. Nah, impossibly high stakes make the fight so much better. <sighs> Let's just stay focused, shall we? The only furniture of note is a bent metal table, a pristine blade perched. We take it. Okay, sure, you take the blade before letting me finish telling you it's there. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. This feels right. We just have to keep our senses sharp. That's right, we've got to be able to win eventually. We will win eventually. Hell, we might even win now. That's a fighting spirit I like to see. You could all learn a thing or two from this one. I'd love to get started just as much as you would, but how are we supposed to get down there? You walk through the door. You do know what doors are, right? But there isn't a door. It's just that mirror again. There isn't a mirror. You really messed things up, didn't you? It's like you can't even see reality anymore. I can feel the air coming up from behind it, stinking of iron and steel. He might be right. Could be a trick. If our other senses can't feel it, then we can't trust it. If it's in our way, let's just break it and move on. You make your way to the door at the end of the room, stopping just in front of it. You really must think you're looking at a mirror. Well, it doesn't exist. Just reach forward and open it. Let's just fumble for the handle and be done with it. I don't care what we look like. I care about getting to the end of this mess. You reach forward and place your hand on the door to the basement. It creaks open. And the mirror's gone. How eh, surprising. It was never there. Just an illusion. Let's just get to the princess already. I didn't care about the mirror before, and I care about it even less now. Guess it's time for us to see her again. Just stay focused and you'll be fine. You step forward, but you don't get a chance to linger on the basement stairs. They are smooth and flat and metallic, an unintentional and unfortunately slippery ramp that quickly sends you skittering to the bottom. Your body tumbles onto the basement floor and the form of the princess comes into view, standing at a distance. She gives you a wry smile. Hi, it looks like you don't have a way out, so I'm not going to play dumb anymore. But don't worry about how bad you did last time. That's part of the fun. She's got another thing coming if she thinks we're going down easy again. Pride makes us dead. 
The only thing that matters is survival. Actually, does survival matter? We've died twice and nothing bad has come of it. We just need to find a way to win once. Nothing bad has come of it yet. Plenty bad has come of it. You've left at least one entire world to ruin. The people there mattered. The past isn't real. There's only here and now. Your internal bickering is cut short by the wet sound of slicing meat. From the princess's arms erupt twin blades, glistening with her blood, the empty flesh of her arms flopping at her elbows like torn sleeves. The chain clatters to the floor. She's loose, and she is coming for you. You're going to make me walk over to you, aren't you? Shit. She's coming for us, and I'm out of ideas. Now, I've tolerated quite a bit from you, but this is a bridge too far. Please don't try romancing the princess. She wants to kill you. She's going to end the world if you don't stop her. Yeah, do we have to flirt with the murderous monster? I'd rather not. I'm into it. Can't say I mind either. If it weren't for all the cheating, I'd say she's pretty cute. Can we flirt by fighting her, though? The look. The look. We've all used it. Yeah, do you not know about the look? The look, eh? So we're getting serious about this. You flash the princess the look and a rosy blush rushes to the princess's cheeks as she breaks into a wide grin. Unbelievable. Oh, is that how it is? Yeah, okay, I feel that. I like you too. Neat. Oh, be damned. This is actually going to work, isn't it? Still going to kill you, but now we can both enjoy a mutual romantic subtext to the murder. Or not. Oh, I like her. I like her a lot. Blush still glowing in her cheeks. The princess closes the distance between you, blades flashing. She skewers you. Ow. What worthwhile romance doesn't hurt at least a little bit? What matters is that she likes us. She's even said as much. Oh, a new one of us. I thought that only happens when we die. Did we die? You're on a... No, you're in a... Where the hell are you? I don't like that we died without us knowing it. This really, really blurs some lines that I prefer not to be blurred. Are we still dead? Are we alive again? How are we even supposed to know the difference? Stop saying dead, all of you. We might have died a second ago, but right now we're extremely not dead. This is all horribly wrong. How many times have you been here? This is four. No wonder everything's such a mess. This wasn't supposed to go past one. I wonder what you're going to do next. You're so full of ideas and I love that. But I guess we don't have time to talk about things before the princess advances. Okay, whatever we do gets us another us. Let's see how many we can stack. There's got to be a point where it makes us better than her. We don't need any other voices chattering about in here. It'll just confuse us. All we need is to keep fighting. Yeah, I'll pass on that. As long as we keep moving. We'll win her heart eventually. Come on, show me something new.
then you skewer yourself. I thought we both understood that dying doesn't get you anywhere. Huh, that didn't do much of anything. We're tougher than I thought. Well, there's more of us. Let's see if that helps. What's the point? It's all the same. Skewers you. Oh, don't give up on me just yet. You gotta keep going. Do you see that? We almost had her. That was luck. But we only have to get lucky once. Just panic. Flee. She skewers you. No, you don't get to escape. That's not how this works. It doesn't matter how many times this takes, we can't give up. <sighs> okay, let's go again. She's going to kill this body either way. So stop feeling what it feels. She skewers you. Ooh, not bad. Real tough. See? We're getting better. Okay, okay, yeah. That was a good one. Let's appeal to her better nature. We haven't tried that. I'm sure she'll listen to reason. Excuse you. We're getting close to something, can't you feel it? One last time. You're right. One last time, that's all we need. None of this is working. Think. Think. Skewers you. And then everything goes dark, and you die. Your Honor, don't lose your head. We're in a cabin, and we'll take it from here. Everything feels like it finally fits, doesn't it? We're up here, which is different, and different is good. And our steel claw is already in our hand. Ho oh, ho! What if... Throw it out the window? Over my dead body. That won't be very hard. We've died a lot. But I can't say I mind anymore. Besides, what better way to die so very many times than at the sharp hands of a beautiful woman? Sure, I can think of a better way to die. Eh, they're all the same, really. How about we stop thinking about horrible ways to die? I don't want us to accidentally manifest anything. The only thing we're gonna manifest is finally ending up on top. There are entirely too many of you. How many times have you been here? This isn't good. This is... How about you stick to describing things? And we'll stick to doing them. Yeah, leave it to the pros. We'll notch up that win in no time. Narrator, we heroically stride through the door and towards our destined final encounter with our star-crossed lover. Fine by me. You walk to the door and onto the basement stairs, only it's more of a slide. We know. Fine, I'll just shut up then and speed this whole thing along. Are you sure you don't want me to describe the stairs, or this room, or anything? It feels like I'm hardly a part of this. Don't care, just want to win. Fine, you make your way to the basement, where the princess awaits you. You know, this last time I killed you, and you didn't pop right back up again? I thought I'd actually done it. I thought I'd cut you into so many pieces, you just weren't able to stitch yourself back together. But I guess we're not done. That's okay with me. It's good, even. I like that. I got something ready for you while you were gone. Do you want to see it? I'm not going to wait for an answer. I'm just going to show you. It's worth it, though. Just you wait, and not for very long, because I'm going to do it right now. Do, do, do. Ba, ba, ba. Hmm. Are you going to say what she does? 
Uh, oh, D do you want me to talk now? Well, yeah, she says she has something new. I want to hear about the new thing. Yeah, me too. I think I speak for all of us when I say that I would like to hear you describe her new thing. Really? Okay then. Here we go, now. The princess's skin twists, splitting into red blooms of raw meat as it stretches and tears. And then it erupts. She becomes a wave of blood and viscera, pieces of her splattering against the walls. All that remains in the center of the room is a skeleton of blades. A heart beats furiously in its cage of a chest. Are you ready for what comes next? Holy shit! She's gorgeous. Absolutely divine. Yes, behold the perfect woman. Do you think we can throw her out the window? That looked painful. How is she still alive? Hearts still beating, that's all she needs. This is fake. This is all fake. That's all just made up. She doesn't even have a back anymore. How are we supposed to stab her in it? This is all just a sick joke. I hate existing. We're screwed. I, I quit. I'm done. Forget it. What just happened? It's so quiet. Something feels different about you. It almost makes me feel different. Like I should actually take this seriously for once. You're incredible. Flickering lights in empty cityscapes become pockets of vitality and movement. I am more than I was before. Whenever you are ready, I will wipe your slate clean once again. Eyes close in reflection. Perspectives meld together and the breadth of my experience stretches to new corners. There are contradictions. Conflicts in my nature, 
and there are familiarities that bind everything together. It feels correct. This is what I need to be. This is the only path forward. Is a child the same as an infant? I am an unbroken pattern, but every vessel gives fresh perspectives and carves new avenues of expression. I am different, but I am the same. Those paths lead to worlds you've already seen and to perspectives I have already made my own. They are useless to us now, inaccessible, the only paths of value are those that are yet untread. Why wouldn't I be kind to you? You are the only thing I know that isn't me. Gifts aren't what someone tells you to bring them. My joy is in seeing what you choose. There are no wrong answers, and every perspective illuminates my shadows and shares new secrets. My preference is for you to show me what you would like me to see. I cannot know the ways I wish to grow, for I have yet to feel them. It is you who guides me down the thin trail of perspective and memory. This one is sharp and single-minded. She is cruelty, but she is also joy. She will make for an indomitable heart. Do not mourn her. She is exactly where she needs to be. The vessels are shaped by memories of you but they are drawn to the edge of the long quiet. To them you are a gate to something more, and you are something more than that, too. But they are only thoughts and perspectives. They are not me. The wounds they've suffered carve texture around my heart. Without them, I would be as I was before. I would be alone and without sensation. I could not feel the joy of having you by my side for I would not know your absence. If I am to be an ocean, you have nurtured me into a pond. My waters are shallow and murky, and I yearn for more perspective. You will have your rest in due time, and I am sorry for the burdens I place on you. for your return, but it will give me time to reflect on what I am. We will meet again.